Welcome back to Mr. Curran's Ledger Area Tutorials and what we're going to be looking at today is analysing accounting information. So in other words we're going to be analysing two financial statements that being a statement of profit or loss and also a statement of financial position and in particular we're going to be concentrating on trends. So in other words accounting trends. From last week's podcast where we concentrate on accounting assumptions those being the, can, the going concern, the accounting entity and the accounting time period. This uh, information will be assessed under the describe objective. So in other words, it will be a short answer question. Analyzing uh, company financial reports and in particular profit, statement of profit or loss and the statement of financial position will be examined under the analyzing objective where you have to demonstrate three characteristics. One, identifying trends. Two, identifying accounting problems or issues. And three, identifying relationships from having accounting trends uh, within the business's financial statements. So you can see being an accountant is just not adding up a calculator and working out how much expenses and how much income a business actually makes. A good accountant will be able to produce those financial reports and then to analyze them in order to improve the business's profitability and the ability to grow in terms of market share and also to generate assets for the actual business. And that is what we're going to be concentrating on today. What accounting trends should an accountant look at in order to help their client? Now this question will be in the form of an extended response. So you'll have to write approximately four to five hundred words and it is in the form of a report. Now I've provided here with you the headings for your report. Okay, and since it's an extract, you don't have to have an introduction and a conclusion. So you'll have a main heading here, issues of the financial data, make this as a big heading, and then you'll have subheadings underneath it. So you're going to be analyzing uh, the purchase price calculation for a proposed business. That will be done in two vodcasts time. You'll be looking at um, the purchase price for the proposed stock and investment provide history and share and trends of share price and also issues with the proposed business financials. So in other words, you'll be comparing a business that your client could actually buy as compared to a, a share in which they're actually going could potentially invest into. Now, as I said before, the analyzing objective will come under three will cover three characteristics that is you highlighting some trends so looking for trends within the business whether that trend is going up or down and what are the relationships caused by the trend so in other words firstly you're going to have to identify a trend and from there what has this trend caused the business to do and so in other words you're going to be looking at Accounting trends, that being financial information from the statement of profit or loss. So in other words, looking at increases or decreases in revenues and also increases or decreases in expenses. And what is the ripple effect of having that trend on the statement of financial position, in particular, a, their cash, their ability to expand through internal sources. So in other words, not relying on loans or mortgages and also um, whether they are actually growing as a business and retaining the profits to, in order to expand internally rather than external finance. And what are the implications of these trends? So you're going to have to explain what these figures actually mean. In other words, explain what the trend is. Now, accounting joke of the day is the following. How does a pirate report treasure on their taxes? On a Schedule C. <laughs> now that was a funny accounting joke if I do say so myself. Now when you actually have this question you'll be presented with two financial statements. One being the statement of profit or loss and one being a statement of financial position. Now with a statement of profit and loss it will actually be looking at all the revenues for, a for the actual business itself. Now this is actually a 
statement of profit and loss from a bank. So their main form of business, main form of revenue is their income that they actually generate from having loans and various other types of liabilities to customers. So you're going to be looking at how much money that they actually generate as opposed to how much ex how much expenses they actually incur in the actual financial year and the other trend which you're going to be looking at is how much money they are actually making in the financial year and previous financial years as well. So if we actually look at this statement of profit and loss, you can actually see here the years are up at the top here, 2018, 19 and 2020. So these are called comparative years. Now in the exam, you will get two comparative years and the column beside it will actually be a various percentage. Now that various percentage will indicate how much that account has gone up or down from the previous year. So for example, with uh, comparing the interest income from 2019 and 2020, we can actually work out that the income has actually gone down by 211 million. So in other words, I worked out that the 2019 income was 16,907,000 and it's actually decreased to 16,696,000 which is a difference of 211 million or 1.24%. Now you won't have to work out the percentages, they will be given for it to you. Now since a drop in, they have incurred a drop in the income, that is actually a poor or a bad outcome for the business. So you will actually want to see this net, net, net revenue or net sales increasing over time. As opposed to expenses, we can actually see here that the operating expenses here for this business has actually increased over a period of time. And we want expenses to be as low as possible. So this is a bad outcome for the business. And because of the revenue going down and expenses rising, we can actually see a relationship forming here between the net profit and also the drop in income and the increase in expenses. So the income, net profit, sorry, has actually decreased from 8, 8 uh, million down to 6.7 million down to 2.2 million. All right, and that is obviously a very, very bad outcome to have for the business. So that is what the first thing that you need to look for uh, when presented with these two financial statements. What is happening with the sales? What is happening with, with expenses? And you want to be specific um, in your answer as well. So when you're looking at the biz a business, it'll actually be broken down into a number of expenses and that could be, for example, advertising, bad debts, cost of goods sold, uh, repairs and maintenances and wages. So this will actually be broken down for you so you can actually comment on specific expenses itself. And the other trend that you'll actually be looking for is the drop in net profit or the increase in profit over time for a business. As opposed to a statement of financial position which looks at how much assets the business actually has and when looking at the asset parts of it, the most important trends or the most important accounts that you will actually be looking at is how much cash a bank that business actually has. And as we can see here, this business cash a bank account has increased by uh, from 20 million through to 30 million. All right, and that is a very good outcome to have. So that basically represents that all of the net profit that they're actually generating is getting stored or getting kept in the cash at bank account. The other trend in terms of assets that you will be looking at and concentrating on is the total property plant and equipment. All right, and that basically represents the total assets that the business owns. Now this is very important because as a business, you will want to generate all of the money internally, in other words, from your sales and the money that you keep in your cash or bank account for purchasing this property plant and equipment as opposed to uh, getting a loan or some type of mortgage from a bank or external finance. So you want to look at how are we actually paying for this rise in property plant and equipment. 
and the increase in property fleet and equipment or your assets generally represents that the business ex is expanding and so in other words as a financial advisor we want to know how are we purchasing or funding this expansion of assets and the next part of the statement of financial position is your liabilities and also your owner's equity as well and from liabilities point of view we want to be looking at our loans okay so in other words in a company it could either be a loan or a mortgage all right and we can see here that in 2018 19 and 20 our loans have actually been increasing from 28 million to 29 million okay and now up to 40 Point nine million dollars and that is a bad outcome for the business so in essence that increase in the property plant and equipment is a relationship or being attributable and purchased or funded through liabilities in the form of mortgages or loans and that is a bad outcome for the business and that needs to obviously be discussed with your client in the, in the report itself the next thing that we actually want to be looking at is whether the business can actually keep the profits in the shareholders equity or the owners equity account for each of the businesses and as we can see here this is represented by an increase in your total uh, equity for the business and in this case it's increased by 56.8 million to 59.7 to 65.4 and 68.02 million all right and that represents that the business's profits are getting kept by the by the business itself and that is a good thing to actually have and that is represented by the the increase in your retained profits here so they are the two things that you need to look for when looking at your liabilities and also your shareholders or your owners equity so a accounting trend is basically represented by a general direction and momentum of behavior of a variable in a time series now put that in layman's term it's basically meaning that account whether that's from a statement or profit or loss in the forms of sales wages advertising or cost of goods sold is increased or decreased over time and an accounting trend can be either one of the four things a change in financial data so in other words a change in account a change in market share so you could actually have information about the business and whether their market share has increased or decreased within the industry as with uh, the business that we learned last term a accounting trend could also be a change in customer preferences and demands or it could be an increase in automation and the use of our assets internally to an efficient basis but primarily for this exam we are going to be looking at the first dot point and we're looking at changes in financial data so in other words changes in the most important accounts in the statement of profit or loss and the statement of financial position now what I'm going to give you now is a series of exercises where you're going to have to pick out what are the main accounting trends in this statement so going back or a bit of a revision from the previous couple of slides the main trends from a statement of profit and loss are the sales or the net income the changes in expenses and also the change in net profit so I want you to have a look at this scenario here and determine what are the main trends and whether those trends represent a positive or a negative outcome for the business okay looking at this scenario here I hope you identified that the first one that you will always look at in in these questions is how much income they actually generate generated for the financial years and we can see here that we've got five years of comparative information 
and our income has been increasing throughout those five years. So in 2016, it's gone from 12.9 million to 2017 to 13.2 million to 2018 13.5 million 2019 a very small increase to 13.55 million and in 2020 a bigger jump to 13.9 million and that represents a very positive outcome for the business and an, and a business that is obviously growing and expanding so that is a good trend to have the next trend that you're actually going to be looking at is what is actually happening with the expenses so you can see here the operating expenses have been increasing over time but at a lesser degree than its than its sales or its income so in 2016 it's gone from 8.3 million to 8.5 million 2017 to 9.9 .9 million in 2018 all the way down to 8.3 million again and then jumping to 9.4 million dollars okay so we have a rise in expenses over time and that is equivalent or very close to the rise in the sales as well so usually when you see an increase in sales there's going to be some corresponding increase in increases in expenses more than likely the cost of goods sold and possibly advertising and wages because those are the main accounts that have a relationship with an increase in sales the other trend that you're going to be looking at is the net profit for the year for that financial year and as you can see it's gone from 2016 to 30 357 million to or 0.3 million to 5.3 million in 2017 increasing to 5.6 million in 2018 in 2019 a bit of a dip to 4.8 million and then decreasing again to 2.6 million so this is a very unfavorable outcome to have for a business it has increased over time but it is it has a worrying or a decreasing trend over the five-year period now the reason for that drop in net profit is used is usually attributable to two things one your operating expenses are getting out of control and as we can see here they have been increasing quite by quite significantly over time in particular 2018 19 and 20. however your sales or your income have not generated or increased enough to cover those increase in expenses and hence you have a situation where you have a declining net profit all right so this is a very worrying trend for this business and something that you would actually report to your client and as your as the financial accountant something that you obviously need to document and sort out with them through recommendations the next uh, exercise that you're going to be looking at is what is the accounting trend in these financial indicators as well so I'm going to give you a couple of about 30 seconds to work that out and then we are going to go through them now what this actually represents are a number of things one you can see here that their balance sheet so in other words we are talking about assets and also liabilities so in the blue graph or the blue columns we've got increasing in assets from September 19 to March 2020 and then a decrease in total assets as compared from March to September and then a little rise in assets again as compared to September to March 2021 now a rise in total assets is a very good outcome for the business and we need to obviously look a bit further as to what particular accounts are giving rise to this increase now, as I said before the three main accounts that will give rise to increase in assets are cash at bank property plant and property plant and equipment 
and also accounts receivable. So they are the three main accounts that you are looking at in addition to inventory, sorry, that will give rise to the increase in assets. Now, if we look here, our liabilities have slightly increased from September 2019 to March 2020 and then have decreased or kept equivalent from September 20 to March 20, 2021. And we want to see a decline in liabilities because liabilities represent uh, people that we owe money to. They could be in the form of accounts payable, loans or mortgages. So that decrease in liabilities is a positive outcome for this business as in conjunction with the increase in the assets over time. Now, next uh, accounting trend that I want you to look at is what is actually happening with this business's cash at bank account. So I'll give you 30 seconds to work that out and then we'll actually discuss it. Now we can see here that the cash of bank account for the National Australia Bank is increasing and that is a very positive outcome that we actually have for this business. So our cash of bank has gone from a, just under 100 billion all the way up to 150 billion dollars. Okay and that is a very good outcome which means we are generating enough sales to cover our expenses and we are keeping that profits in the cash at bank account which we can actually use to increase our assets and thereby allowing our business to actually grow. Our next accounting trend that we're actually looking at here is the revenue of assets of Adidas, Nike and Puma from 2006 to 2016. Now well, I'm going to concentrate on the Nike outcome for this one so I want you to work out whether this is a favorable trend or an unfavorable trend for Nike and I'll give you 30 seconds to work that out. All right so we can actually see here these is the sales or the total sales for Nike and it is increasing as you can see over a period of time. It started at $13.44 billion and now in 2016 it has increased to $29.1 billion. So this therefore represents a very positive outcome or a positive trend for Nike. And as we can see here conversely with uh, Puma for example their sales have stagnated and that is not obviously a good trend to have in a business and Adidas has slightly increased their revenue over time but not as far as Nike has. So in terms of which business has the most favorable outcome it is obviously Nike because their sales have grown at a greater rate than the other two competitors. So that is the end of our vodcast. So we've actually covered uh, the trends in financial statements. So just as a bit of a summary, the three trends that you're looking for in a statement of profit and loss is your sales, your operating expenses, and in particular, your advertising, your wages, and your cost of goods sold, or any other expenses that have significantly increased over time. And in your statement of financial position is uh, your cash at bank and a favorable outcome is the increase in your cash at bank, your accounts receivable which we'll talk about in the next podcast uh, and also our loans and mortgages in our liability section. Calculator!